Let's brew some beer. IPA. Have you ever had a beer and you thought to yourself, that's really good. I'd like to brew that myself. Well, my friends, that is what we're doing today. Today we are going to be making a clone of the Torpedo IPA recipe made by Sierra Nevada. Great thing about craft brew world is we like to share kind of our recipes and whatnot, or at least some of us do. In this case, Sierra Nevada actually posts their recipe online. We will be making one slight modification today where I don't happen to have crystal hops, so I'm going to be substituting those with a similar hop, and that is going to be Liberty. I happen to have that on hand, and that's what we're going to be using. Grains are sitting at the very, very top of our grain basket there. We're going to be pushing this anvil foundry to its limit. Today's mash is going to take 90 minutes. It's going to be sitting at 155 degrees. Now that we're waiting for our mash in to finish, let's talk. Why a clone? Well, besides the fact that I love this beer, it's a great way to learn your malts, your hops, and your yeast. People have asked me, how do you come up with your recipes? Well, it's purely from experience. I've been brewing for nearly 10 years now, and just over time, you kind of learn what those malts are that you like, what sort of hops you like, and of course, which yeast is your preferred strain. When you're starting out though, it can be really intimidating. So, what I started by doing was picking out a beer that I really enjoyed, found a clone recipe of it, whether it be directly from the, the brewery. In this case, well, Sierra Nevada has us covered. You can go ahead and check out their recipe right on their website. But if a brewery doesn't have it, a lot of times, there's somebody out there that's already brewed it. Just look for the recipe. Did I also mention we're brewing this torpedo and fermenting it in a torpedo? Torpedo squared. After that terrible joke and our 90 minute mash has finished, it's time to mash out at 170 degrees for 10 minutes. Once that's finished, we pull our grains and get our wort into the kettle. You know what time it is after that, folks. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for Hop edition. Hop edition. Hop edition. Finish that brew day. Keg that beer without chilling it. Put it outside for a no-chill brew day. And wait for it to cool until yeast pitching time. Pitch your yeast. Let it sit and ferment and pour yourself a glass of a beautiful beer. Welcome to the tasting of the Torpedo IPA. I hope you enjoyed my new form of filming. Kind of felt like mixing it up and uh, just trying something new. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments on that. But without further ado, let's take a look at these two here. Can you tell which is which? This one is the original Torpedo IPA by Sierra Nevada, and this is my version. Color comes out pretty close. It's a little bit darker in mine, but overall, I mean, it's, oh, it's right there with it. What I am curious to see is, obviously we swapped out the Crystal Hops with Liberty Hops, since that's what I had on hand, and it was listed as a substitute on a few sites. Let's go ahead and Get a whiff of each of these, see if they're close. Definitely some caramel notes, heavy caramel notes on the original Torpedo IPA. Some lighter caramel notes on mine. We'll give it a little bit of swirl. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's definitely caramel that comes through on both of these. Mine just a slight bit less than what the original is. Let's go ahead and take a taste. Oh, the original, you just can't beat it. Crisp, it's clean, it's caramel, it's hoppy. It's just a little bit of everything in an IPA. 
Let's see how mine stacks up. They're both very close. I will say the original has just a slight bit brighter note to it. Um, tough to describe, but it's ever so slightly different. These are pretty dang close when it comes to taste. And overall, comparing it with Sierra Nevada's recipe online and what they have posted about the beer, this thing came in within maybe a point on both starting gravity and final gravity. And even the alcohol content is right there. I mean, this is listed at, I believe, 7.2. This one came out at 7.2. So, I mean, I couldn't have asked for any closer uh, for hitting numbers on these two here. Great beer. I recommend trying it out. And if you happen to have crystal hops, give it a shot with the actual crystal hops. Substitute that out from the uh, Liberty that I used. But otherwise, Liberty seems to have done the job as well. Just a beautiful IPA. Highly recommend you give it a shot and don't be afraid to try some clones. It's just a good way to go. Um, when I started making recipes, that's what I started with. Bale Breaker and the Top Cutter IPA that they make was my all-time favorite beer. And I made a clone of it and it's kind of what pushed me into getting to just brewing more. And it kind of helps you get to know what each hop has to offer and what some of the grains have to offer. It's just start there and get into it. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next brew. Cheers.